<laughs> All right. We're live again for another episode of Inside the Mind of. Again, my name is Ken Ken Sumera, and we're here to talk about a lot of things na sobrang very interesting for me. Kasi, um, ito, palagi akong tinatanong, lalo na my dad always asked me, uh, importante yung spirituality. And ngayon, uh, while I was talking to a lot of uh, my friends sa uh, mga meditation community, clarity of mind, uh, napag-uusapan namin yung intuition. So, Ah, uh, ang dami natin pwedeng pag-usapan ngayon na sobrang interesting kaya stay tuned kayo dito. Now, I want to welcome, okay, one of my good friends na sobrang tinitingala ako in regards to tarot reading then si Rob Rubin. Welcome, Rob. Hey, Ken, good to see you again. Bro. Yeah, man. What's up, bro? So, What's up, man? <laughs> ito, steady steady lang naman yung araw natin ngayon. I w- uh, Yeah, I was I was watching your uh, show yesterday, uh, Mysterium After Dark, with our good friend, yeah, si Justin Pinion, and it was really good, man. Well, thanks for that, brother. I mean, it's always an honor to give good broadcasting material to the rest of the world. <laughs> yeah, man. So, guys, uh, introduction lang, ah. So, si Rob, uh, we've uh, been friends for how many years na rin, and uh, naging magkaklase kami sa conversational hypnotherapy certification program haba man haba uh, yeah with uh, one of our mentors yeah si Karsten Kusner hope oh, yeah rob babalik si Karsten next year oh when when next <laughs> year yeah i think it's july pare uh, it, it's oh, ano i think it's uh, it's already locked so solid na yan jason's taking care of everything and awesome. uh, hopefully magkita kits ulit tayo kita kits tayo din So, uh, Rob, um, give give us a brief intro of um, what you've been passionate about for the past years. Well, if, if we're going to go with the past years, it would mm. really be my company, Mysterium Philippines. We are the leading intuitive development and service provider in the Philippines right now. We focus basically on a community of people who focuses on helping people understand their intuitive gifts and basically develop their own intuitive talents in a safe and affordable space. Aside from that, of course, people know me for being a tarot reader. I used to have a TV show called Mysterio. Uh, oh. <laughs> back in way old times. Um, I'm also author of two books, Defense of Occultism and The Intuitive Then. And I'm presently working on my third one on manifestation. So these are all topics that um, are very close to my heart. Manifestations. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, pag-usapan natin yan. Very, very intri- intriguing. So, uh, yan. Hi muna tayo sa mga friends natin na nanonood ngayon kagad. Hi, si Rob- Jello. Jello Bayani. What's up, man? Si hi, Jello. Si Ryan Lim. Si uh, Tagum Tech. Yeah, hi, Marvik. Hi, what's up? Message lang kayo dito, guys. If you have any questions kay Rob, Um, feel free to message here and we'd glad to actually answer all your questions. Siyempre kung kayang sagutin, wala namang problema. We'd exactly. be glad to, ano, to... Anything you guys want to know, anything under the sun. All right. Sige. So let's, let's, ano, let's talk about ano, uh, our topics for today. Kasi um, as, I, as I was uh, listening kanina, sabi mo yung... Uh, yung book mo in regards to manifestation. Yeah, that's the next book. It's not done yet, but I'm hoping Ay, it will be done soon. <laughs> So, any mga inspiration mo para uh, magsulat? Kasi I've been, um, siguro tips from a friend, uh, I've been having a hard time finishing my book. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah para, oh, an- ano, yung, ano yung secret mo para matapos mo yung book? <laughs> you know, I actually like to cut up the book into interesting topics. Uh, my secret to, to actually finishing writing a book is, I will cut it up into all the topics that I want to uh, discuss. Mm-hmm. And then what I'm going to do is afterwards, um, once that's all done, then I will choose the topics one by one, which inspire me to write. Okay. And uh, then once that's done, then I basically we just fill in the stop gaps. So basically just, just focus on what you like to write, uh, what, you, what, you, what inspires you to write. Don't force yourself into writing. Mm. Um, and you know, just do it at your own pace, and you'll see the results one by one. Yeah. So, cut cut to topic. So I'm taking note, pare, because it's <laughs> because you're coming from book, experience, man. In any book, can I'll be totally honest with you? They're gonna be what we call blazing topics, and they're gonna be mm. shit topics. Yeah. Now, shit topics, like oh my god, I don't want to have to write about this. It's like doing a thesis. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> Versus there are the topics that you just think about it and you just, you know, um, it flows out of you naturally. Oh, this is really what inspires me. Like, example, I know you're into NLP, right? Yeah. If you're talking about like methods of NLP, then yeah, you'd be interested in writing about that. But mm. of course, if you were to write about the history of NLP, medyo malabo yeah, and you'd be like, oh, crap. Man. Oh, yeah. yeah no. Fuck that. I mean, so um, you, ha- you have to basically pace yourself. Once you see the growth going on in your book, once you see it starts forming, then you have like pretty much 70% of a book done. And then you'll, you'll have more incentive of actually finishing it. So um, what I did was with my last book, it was really insp- inspired work except for the last chapter, which was about the chakras. And hmm. I really didn't, it was like, that was so boring because I had to define each chakra. It's me, it's me, it's me. <laughs> this is exhausting. <laughs> I, I left that for the last. So when the book was 99% done, that was the last chapter. Hmm. I told my PA, buy three venti brewed coffees. Lock me in the <laughs> Don't let me out until this is done. Okay? So he <laughs> sat with me and he said, boss, you told me not to let you out. Finish this chapter today. So you had to really level grind it. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm going man. Ako sa akin, importante. I, I wrote it down, bro. Cut the best thing topic. you can do if you're going to write about a book, write your outlines. Mm. Okay? What topics are you going to discuss one by one? Okay? Mm. You'll find a way of stitching topic A to topic B down the line. But if you basically say, okay, topic on NLP, uh, NLP for single guys, NLP for family men, okay? That's fascinating, right? Yeah. By writing those as essay forms, then basically you're already putting bits and bits into your book. So mm. all you have to do once essay one, essay two is complete, find like a paragraph or two to stitch them together. And that's easy. Once the work is done, you'll have more uh, possibility of, you know, continuing your momentum versus if you're just looking at a spreadsheet and nothing's been done, you're just going to be... <laughs> I was a spreadsheet din ako, man. But uh, yeah, in regards to your to manifestation, pare, I mean, um, could you share to our audience right now, I know, what, is, what is manifestation? Okay, you know, that's actually a blazing topic right now. A lot mm-hmm. of people in the New Age community are getting really, really interested in it because it's talking a lot, a lot about, you know, the, the concepts of things like the law of attraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, tama. And yeah. you know, things are great, but they can be a bit obscure at times. People don't really get well, so what? I just feel good about myself. I'm going to get what I want. Because if i I feel good about myself, but I don't have a Ferrari yet. You know what I mean? Mm. So there's actually a method to the madness of that. Now, my good friend, Winston Lim, gives a very, very good introduction to manifestation class. And he usually offers it just by donation basis only. But mm-hmm. sometimes there are people who will say, you know what? It sounds good, but I want more. I want the deeper stuff. It's like you can give me a tiny, tiny example of what NLP is about. But then if I like it, I said, no, I know there's more to this. Okay, Ken, let's talk. And then that's when you take the deep dive. That's when you start understanding the principles, the practices, the ideologies, the formulas, the methods in order to manifest. And that's what my book is going to be about. Now, mm. I don't want to share the topic online about manifestation yet with, uh, because it's still a secret. My, mm. But it's very much tied to something that's very close to my heart. So you're going to see two versions of myself in that book. You're going to see the topic of manifestation and something else altogether. Mm. But in in regards to uh, manifestation, is it uh, kumbaga, Of course, it requires visualization. Um, yeah, it does. yeah, there are people, lalo na um, highly auditory people, that have a hard time with uh, visualizing things. Of uh, is is there a way in where you could? Is it trainable? Yes, it is because. Actually, the most powerful form of manifestation doesn't even come from audio, visual, kinetic. It comes mm. from emotional. Mm-hmm. Emotional. Example, how would you feel, Ken, if you won a million dollars right now? Yeah, yeah, man. So, the one thing I ask people in my manifestation class, which is actually opening this July, we have a manifestation class in Mysterium, Philippines. Is mm-hmm. I ask them one fundamental question at the beginning of the class, and that okay. is, what do you want? Okay, I write it on the board. It's July 20 at 4 p.m. We still have open slots. What do you want? Okay, so I look at people one by one. An example, I ask people, what do you want? They write it down. Oh, and then they say, I want a boyfriend. The very first thing I observe is, how do they react when they say that? A lot of people, they do this. I want a boyfriend. Ah, oh, look. <laughs> look at their energy. The minute they say they want something, their energy, that emotional connection is not fueling it properly. So they say, 
I don't want a boyfriend. You don't want a boyfriend. You just showed me through your energy that you don't feel you deserve a boyfriend. That's why you don't have a boyfriend. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I make them aware of how their emotional energetic state directly affects their manifestations. Diba? Emotional energetic state. Exactly. Because your emotions give off energy. Right? So if you told me that you want to be a PhD in hypnosis, but you're like this, you're like... Uh, Look at me, Ken. Like, I've been looking at it like this. Like, you say, I want to be a PhD in hypnosis. It's like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure that's what you want? Fuck that. <laughs> exactly. But you've seen it as an NLP practitioner and as a hypnotist, mm. what someone looks like when they really want something. When they really want it, yeah. Exactly. It, it, like, it goes know. out with not just the tone of voice, eh? I mean, it's, it's like noticing a person in love. Eh? With they, exactly. they don't need to say it. You see it. You feel it. But they're in love. It's exactly. different. And as, yeah. and, and as a result of that, what ends up happening is when you have the right energy to back up what you're asking for, then you can mm -hmm. make it happen because there's going to come Hannibal's saying of we will either make a way or find what. Simple as that. Diba? So it's like you can tell in a person's eyes that this person's going to be great. They're going to make something happen. They're going to use all of their willpower to making one thing occur in their life. And um, you know, it's like, don't get in that guy's way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you know they have the audacity, they have the strength, they have the vision, they have the courage, they have all of it to go for it. Then you know the people who, they're not fucking serious. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, you know, you don't have it in you. Um, it's not that you're saying they're not going to get it. It's just that they need to change their emotional energetic state. The, the, I, I'm, I'm listening to that. And I want to add Jen in regards to the, word, the question that you asked earlier. Yeah. What do you want? Yeah. Um, I it's 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 um I attended the presentation before. Uh, it's an it's an MLM company, yeah. and they started with that effing question, man, and it was really effing hard to answer. Because uh, tapos as a hypnotist, I was playing with it. It's a fucking hard question to answer. Why not we make it more harder? Okay, by adding really. Really? What do you really want? What do you really want? Okay, I'll do that next time in my class. Because here's the thing Dude. about it. If you can't be true to yourself, Ken, and if you can't say to yourself that this is what I want and come out in the open, this is what I want, why are you afraid, ashamed of what you want? Sometimes they want something that they're hiding it. Like, hmm. What do you really want? Because if you don't have the guts and the balls to stand up and say, I want this and I'll do anything to get it, then guess what? You're never going to get it. <laughs> You'll slowly sabotage yourself. You have hmm. to have enough energetic maturity and mindfulness to say, mm. no, I am allocating my resources into this. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you think. You know what I mean? A lot mm -hmm. of people say they want something, but mm -hmm. they want something else completely. It's what we call the pageant answer. You know what I mean? Miss Universe, Universe <laughs> answer. You know what I mean? They're not oh, knocking Miss Universe. They're both very lovely, but it's like mm. they have what we call canned answers. Yeah. All right. If you ask these women what they really want, they probably say, I want a condo in the Hamptons. I want a Ferrari. You know what I mean? If you're going to go to their core, and when people come from their core, then there's nothing that can stop them because they're coming from truth. And that was what my second book was all about, your intuitive truth. I talk to people about that. You know, what is your intuitive truth? It's, the word intuitive means it's subjective, okay? Mm. It's internal. It's, it's something internally, subjectively experienced. That it, doesn't, it defies logic, okay? It doesn't need to make sense. Like, example, love. It doesn't need to make sense. Why do you love your wife? Why do you love this person? Ah. It, 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 if, oh. if you have a list, it's, it's different. It's but useless, but most, most of the time, you can't actually answer that shit. Exactly. But do you know it's true? Do you love your wife? Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's like, I know it. <laughs> so that being said, your intuitive truth is something that you also know internally. It's like, fuck yeah. yeah. You know internally you want to be an NLP trainer. That's your intuitive yeah. truth. You could have made hundreds of thousands working for a BPO or a corporation, but no. Yeah. Ken Ken's intuitive truth is to be an NLP trainer, practitioner. My intuitive truth is to be a tarot reader, to be a coach, to be a mentor of the intuitive arts. And the thing is, whenever we go for our intuitive truth, Ken, the very yeah. first thing we'll hear from people who aren't doing their intuitive truth, they'll tell you this. But there's no money in that. Ah. Uh -huh. How many of you, I don't know if the, if the viewers have ever heard anybody say that to you. Like, oh yeah, that's great. But you know what, Robert? There's no money in that. <laughs> okay. So that being said, the biggest question is this. The biggest question is, 
How do you respond to that? I always tell mm. my students and the, the readers of my book is your answer should be, well, who said I'm doing it for money to begin with? You <laughs> what a strong reframe, brother. Exactly. It's like, wait, uh, yeah, right? Think of it like this. Who's the greatest <laughs> chef in the world right now? Um, I don't know. I, ang pinakamatunog lang kasi chef si Gordon Ramsay. Okay. Go- Does Gordon Ramsay cook for the money? Uh, Does he need it? Hindi. Hindi na. Hindi na. Not <laughs> now. Right? Okay. Yeah. So he doesn't cook for the money. He cooks because he loves to cook. But exactly. he doesn't do it for free. <laughs> diba? Diba? Yeah. So he will, even if you went up to him and said, Gordon, here's $20 million you cook for me. If he doesn't like you, he'll tell you, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Right? That means he's in complete touch with his intuitive truth that it's no longer about selling himself to get it done. All right? Mm. The thing is, he's not exactly cheap either. If he agrees, that's just half the battle. The oh, David in the show, man. Exactly. So your intuitive truth is something that you'd want on your tombstone. You know what I mean? Because we've got a lot of people in this country, they work for DPOs, we've got nurses, uh-huh. we've got doctors. And I always ask people one thing, what do you want on your tombstone? Do you want to be known as the best HR practitioner in the Philippines or the best NLP trainer in the Philippines? Diba? Which one yeah, do you yeah, want? That's what I always say. Impact. What's eh. yeah. the impact that you're doing? Because... Um, sige, hi, hi guys. Sige, babalik ako. May questions tayo. Ah. Pero um, I just want to finish the thought. Yung concept kasi ng um, impact, living an impact, is uh, I've, I've uh, followed this marketer guy. Mm-hmm. Tapos ang charge niya sa mga sessions niya is sobrang mga nasa 500 to 1,000 dollars yung actually online courses niya. Damn. And then dumating birthday niya, he offered it for around 33 dollars. Wow. And then, sobra ako parang, what the fuck? Sige, I, 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 I've been following this guy. So, bili ka agad ako. I didn't think about it. Pero, watch, I watched his video. Ang sabi niya ganito. Uh, you know why? I gave this for just $33. This is just for my birthday. I want to leave an impact. I want to be the person that actually changed your life. Okay. That's wow. Well, wala lang. I just want to share that. Pero, hi tayo sa mga friends natin. Uh, <laughs> hi, guys. Hey, nice. everyone. Ang dami niya. Uh, Hindi ko isa-isa, pero hi guys, hi everyone. Comment kayo ng ano, I'm here para alam ko nandito pa kayo. So, si Christina, she's one of the admins sa mga Philippine HR groups. Cool. Uh, sabi niya, ang question niya is, does this, does this have something to do with Filipinos being raised to be modest and meek? Yes, it does. You know why? I'll tell everybody this. If you want to make mm-hmm. an impact in this world, demurity is your worst enemy. Mm. You know why? Bakit, bakit, yeah. I tell in my in my workshops that if you are not mar- if you're good at something and you're not marketing yourself, you are by default marketing the competition. Damn. The Damn, bad. son. If you're good at NLP and I don't know about your NLP, if I don't know that oh, there's this guy named Ken teaching NLP, doing NLP, then by default you are marketing anybody else who does it. Tama. So you I have agree. to have enough audacity within you. To say, hey guys, look at what I'm doing. The problem is, unfortunately, as a half Filipino, I was also raised like this. We're always so, oi, 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 wag ka na lang. Oh, oh, ka lang. Yeah, yeah. Ka lang. right? Tahimik ka lang. Chill. Oh, but the, the, ka lang. Yeah, but the thing is, that doesn't work for us because it's like this. Oh, okay, I have this nice cologne. Would you like to purchase it? What's wrong with that? Right? There's mm. nothing wrong. Oh, I have this cologne. Would you like to purchase it? Smells good, right? Would you like this? That's just simply sales. Demurity will tell you, no, wait until you're asked. Diba? You wait until somebody approaches you. But the worst thing, the worst failure in any form of marketing, Ken, is not a no. It's a I didn't know. Mm. That is what would really break my heart. I don't mind if somebody says, Robert, I'm not interested in the tarot reading. I would mind if somebody said, Robert, I never knew you were into tarot reading. That means I <laughs> failed to make an impact to letting this person know that I'm into tarot. You Tama. Tama. And, and basically the cause of that is really demurity if you are too quiet if you don't let the world really know what you're doing then nobody's gonna know you nobody's gonna purchase from you you could be the best you could really be like the black belt of black belts in what you're doing but if nobody knows you you're not gonna make any money yeah kaya nga ako nagpupursige ngayon sa connecting with a lot of marketing friends so I, I could understand how, how to market not just myself but also my friends. Mm-hmm. And and coming coming from, you know, hi, 
Hi, Lay. Hi, Napoleon Aquilio, uh, Nevia de los Santos. Yeah, comment lang kayo na I'm here para alam ko kung nag-join pa. <laughs> yung iba kasi nag-join, aalis, nag-join, aalis. So, yeah, just comment. If you have any questions, we'd be glad to work things out. Can I add, a, can I add another common point? Okay. Yeah, sure, man. All right, sure. Here's another common point when selling yourself. Because here's the mm. thing. No matter what you're selling, unless you're selling sex toys, mine is going to mm. be harder. Okay? Because I'm selling tarot card readings. Okay? Uh-huh. I'm selling tarot card readings. But the thing about it is this. If you know how to properly sell yourself, you're going to find people interested whether you like it or not. Okay? People naturally will say, eh, it's hard sell. It's hard to sell. People don't want to buy. You'll never know unless you try. If I offer you, Ken, you want a reading? If you say no, status quo. Mm. I don't lose anything. What if, if you say yes, I've made money off you. Mm. Diba? It's a win-win. The problem is people have been told, no, wait until the person approaches. Then you do that. That works against you. In this day and age, you have to have the guts to go for what you want. I mean, mm. it, with, with what I do with selling and reading tarot cards, it's a very niche market. But the thing about yeah. it is I let people know, oh, see, yeah, this is what I'm doing. I divide people amongst those open and those closed. If a person doesn't believe in it, I don't even bother selling to them. We say that in our tarot course. Don't sell Tama. meat to vegetarians. Tama. It's pointless. I won't give a slab of bacon to Jason. You know what I mean? Magkakasakit siya, man. Exactly. No, but then I'd give it to Dustin. You know what I mean? So, exactly. so, so the, the point I'm trying to get at is this. You need to know who to sell to and how to sell it. And be okay with getting turned down. Because like, I get... Requests for readings all the time because I make noise. I will not make. I will not let a day pass that I don't make some sort of noise either in social media, public. That hey, I'm Robert. What do you do? I'm a reader. Why am I gonna be? Why am I gonna be ashamed of what I do? I've earned it. The problem uh, is people just want to keep quiet. Yeah, man. Ako sa akin, I really like what you're doing right now in regards to the left or right. Yung reading so yung card card lang. Tapos ako comment kami kung left or right. It's it's really. Hindi lang sa spot on for me. I enjoy it. Ako personally, I enjoy it on a day-to-day basis. I, I look forward to it. And uh, you see me commenting on, on a daily basis on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, ano pa? Yung, yung kanina sinasabi ko is um, personal branding. Uh, very, very, very important dyan eh. Kung guys, kung nakikinig oh, yeah. kayo ngayon, ito yung pinag-uusapan namin kasi we've, we've been in the field for how many years and uh, ngayon pa lang namin masya- makikita yung sobrang importance eh. You know, I, I want to shout out to my dear friend, um, oh. Ms. Cecil Rebolios, who ha- actually has a personal branding workshop. Mm. And she really I, rocks it. It's a two-day program. Her personal brand, it's called Brand You. And yo. she's a good friend of mine. And I took it and I was blown away. Because the one thing that she taught me in that class, and I'll never forget it, is who do you want to be known for? What's your identity? The problem mm. is people try to put on other identities and it doesn't fit. Tama. You know what I mean? It doesn't fit. So you, and it, it stinks of ingenuine. Like, ako, if I come off as loud, crass, Tony Robbins-ish, you're not going to get offended. You're just going to say, well, that's Rob. Diba? Yeah. But if I came off as a, some sort of, namaste, how are you? Let us <laughs> Dude. <laughs> be like, hey, hey, oh, wait oh, a awkward, minute. Awkward, man. Is, <laughs> even, if, even if I'm putting up the app so well, People will pick it up because they're naturally intuitive in nature. So you need to do the tactic, which is hide it in the wide in, in wide open. Be yourself. What are you really willing to wave, wave a flag for? You know, if you're an MMA fighter, scotch drinking, bacon eating guy who reads tarot cards, then that's you. Own up to it. Mm. But if you're a person who focuses more on meditation and yoga and stillness, if that's you, own up to it. Make that your brand. Because at the end of the day, running your brand is only exhausting if it's not really you. Tama. Uh, yun, yun. Very. Guys, if you have a pen and paper, write that down. Kung, yung, yung memory natin, alam nyo naman, sakto, sakto lang yan. Write, write it down. Or pwede nyo naman i-replay ito. So, uh, pero I, I want to add something na natutunan ko rin sa mga friends natin sa community. Like yeah. is tricks. Yeah. Uh, sa akin, meron, meron siyang palaging words na palaging nasasabi sa akin eh. Mean well. Huh? Mean well. Mean well, So, yeah. sa, if you mean well, alam mo yun, if you have that mindset, but you mean well. You want yeah. you want to help other people. Walang problema. So, a lot of friends or clients na nagko-consult sa akin for persuasion and negotiation na nasa insurance companies, we, I don't fucking know that they're selling insurance on their page. 
Okay, yung 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 page nila uh, iba-iba yung nakalagay din doon. So I, I don't I don't know that they're selling insurance. They're not owning up to it. So yung iba, they started really owning up to it and the results they, they got the results. Mm-hmm. 'Di ba? So yung sinasabi ni Rob kanina is very very important. Are you owning up to it? 'Di ba? Lahat naman tayo, we have a lot of expert. Hindi na marami tayong gustong gawin or marami tayong kayang gawin. Mm-hmm. 'Di ba? Pero meron doon na na meron kang ginagawa that makes you feel that you mean something to the world. Kasi Hanapin mo yun. Yeah. Especially as a tarot reader, okay? Yeah. People actually ask me what my biggest motivation is. And sa totoo, my biggest motiva- motivation is really to give people clarity and peace of mind. Because peace of mind. In, yeah, because we're in a world right now where anxiety is higher than ever before, bro. Damn, like, yeah. You turn on your phone, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a good chance of an anxiety attack of all the things you're seeing. And a lot of things go through people's head. They don't sleep well. They don't. They don't feel happy about themselves. And as a result, they don't have peace of mind. So through my readings, I always want to empower my clients, give them clarity, and give them peace of mind. If I've done that, then you know what? I'm happy. Yeah, y- yun yung uh, tama ka don sa peace of mind. Kanina, uh, guys, bago nagsushow kasi usually. Uh, yung mga guests natin di sa show, we usually talk around 30 minutes before the show. Mm-hmm. Kwentuhan lang, just to catch up and you know, et cetera. Pero, um, napag-usapan namin kanina yung peace of mind. Mm-hmm. Kasi, uh, tama, tama si Rob eh. And, and nowadays, there's too much information, man. <laughs> too, too much. Lalo na sa Facebook. Yeah. Diba? May, may, may problema ka na sa work mo, may problema ka pa sa bahay mo. Pagdating ng Facebook, may problema ka pa rin. Exactly. And you know, diba? the thing about it too, Ken, is this. You know, whenever people come to me for readings, mm. the two most popular topics they always ask about is yeah. love life, mm. career. Okay? Career, yeah. Career and love life. Those are the two topics. Now, here's the thing though. A good reader, and I want the, uh, the viewers to know this, a good mm. reader will never set anything in stone. Okay? Mm-hmm. In other words, it wouldn't be right if I told Joey, Ken, you know, tomorrow you're going to go to the casino and no matter what you do, the stars have said it, you're going to lose all your money and end up bankrupt. <laughs> diba? It's making very fatalistic. It's making things very fatalistic. And all you have to do to, to avoid that fate is just to say, well, then I'm not going to go to the casino. How's that? Exactly. Yeah. Now, a bad reader will really try to corner you and tell you, no, no matter what, this is going to happen. Okay, in 23 years of reading the tarot, again, I've no. never come across a reading that could not be changed. All right? So any reader that tells you no, no matter what, you're stuck, you're screwed, this is going to happen, don't believe it. Because the fate, our, our fate is in our own hands. I mean, we can make any reality that we would want. Mm. Now, the other thing about it too is this. I also don't like to make decisions for my clients either. If they said, um, what, um, should I leave my boyfriend, yes or no? I will never answer yes or no. I will tell them, let's look at what happens if you choose to leave. Let's look at what happens if you choose to leave. And then you make the decision. Diba? Ganda nun, man. <laughs> yeah. It's all about empowerment, bro. I mean, because my biggest, my biggest desire at the end of the reading is that I want people to feel better about themselves. I want them to yeah. leave with a little bit more hope than they had when they entered. Because if they've done that, then I've done my job. Simple as that. Tama. Uh, guys, uh, may readings tayo mamaya. Okay? Pag, uh, so, three, three, people, three lucky people. Yeah, three lucky people. But you gotta uh, share it's... the show on your walls. <laughs> Yun daw. Share nyo. So, uh, hi lang tayo sa mga friends natin. Si Domini the Twiste is watching. I'm here, guys. Hi. Hi, hi everyone. Hi, Domini. Si uh, Riar. Ha? Huh? Oh, yung wife ko daw. Siya daw yung pinakamaraming shinare. So, <laughs> that's, an, that's an average, I guess. Uh, so, uh, si Riyar uh, Villanes, hi, I have problems with my social awkwardness and struggled small talk for many years now. So, Riyar, how mm-hmm. is it? Um, how, how is it right now? So, mukhang sabi mo many years now. So, has anything changed? Uh, if not, how can we help you? Uh, exactly. Social awkwardness, Rob. How, 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 do you, how, how do we work with social awkwardness? Social awkwardness is a, is a worthiness issue. It basically means you're not good enough or you feel like you're not good enough. It doesn't mean you're not good enough. It means that you feel you're not good enough. Mm-hmm. We'll go back to what we said. If you've embraced your intuitive truth, then what do you have to fear? What do you have to hide? Diba? I'm not trying to hide from the world that you know I read tarot cards. I own up to it. Diba? 
In other words, if somebody asks me, what do you do for a living? I'm a tarot consultant. I'm an intuitive coach. So if I hire him, nice to meet you. I'm Robert. I mean, I'm in security with my own um, identity. The problem is a lot of people are not. They're not, they don't feel they're worthy. They feel like, oh, I'm just an HR representative then. I'm just this. I'm just that. The thing is this. People tend to miss out on the fact that they are not their jobs, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> I tell these people in my meetings all the time. Okay, listen to me on this one. I tell my clients all the time that if Monday to Friday you're an accountant, but mm-hmm. Saturday and Sunday you're a dancer, mm-hmm. you're not an accountant who does dancing. You're a dancer who does accounting. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I tell yeah. It to my clients because some people, yeah, they have hard, they have, you know, well paying, hard working jobs. You know, they're in the government, they're lawyers, they're doctors. But I'll always ask them, is that who you really are or is that all you are? You know, the best example, you know who inspired me to thinking like that? It was mm. Strix because for the longest time I didn't know Strix was a doctor. He's like he was a doctor. Doctor, my ass. And then when I went to his clinic, you're a fucking doctor. I said, and then I asked him, why didn't you introduce yourself as Doctor Strix? Ayonya, ayonya. Regalit That's not the only thing I want to be known for, and that's very admirable of him because he is known for many more things than just that. Yeah, he's the father of conversational hypnosis in the Philippines. Ayo din yan nun. Ako lang yung tumatawag sa kanya nun, pero... <laughs> so, you know, that being said, don't be limited just by what you do for a living. I mean, be a little bit more adventurous because at any given time, you can change your reality. Yeah, man. Uh, I have I have a question for those watching right now. Um, kasi, it is it. Uh, sino si sino nagtanong? Si Ria or Bilyanet? Ria, uh, here's, here's a question. This is what, one of my favorite questions in hypnosis. Eh? Um... Mm-hmm. What would you do if no, there's no one to judge you? Okay. Most I of the do? time, yeah. In the, uh, kay Riyar, dun sa nagtanong ng question. Yeah. So if there was no one to judge you, what would you do? Yes. Okay. Tapos itanong mo pa to, isa pa, may follow up question jan. What's stopping you from being the best, the best, the best you? Okay. Mm-hmm. Kay, kay, mo, most of the time, we fail to identify what's stopping us. Eh. That's very okay. So it's usually a combination of indoctrination, it's mm-hmm. a combination of fear, combination of doubt, you know, worthiness. But a lot of people are really they like to be indoctrinated that they're not enough. You know, they <laughs> need to, like they want to be fought. They, they were indoctrinated and and forced to believe that they're meant to conform but not to stand out. And that's actually where it all begins. So para may movie yata nung chick flick yung parang I was born to stand out. <laughs> Kalimutan it. This is chick flick, yun, man. <laughs> so, hi, hi ulit tayo. Before we move on to our next topic, uh, let's say hi. Kay uh, Julian uh, Dionisio, hi. Kay Isabel Bernardo, hello. Welcome hello, to the uh, podcast conversation. Kay Hilary Lorente, hi. Welcome, welcome. Awesome, okay. awesome to have you guys here. <laughs> Ah, yun, tanong ng wife ko, tatlo, tatlo yung, oh, tatlo. Tatlo yung pipiliin daw ni Rob mamaya. Okay, so, let's go with Taro, man. Yeah, fire so, away. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk about that. So, um, and, and, uh, what inspired you, actually, to, to go into Taro reading, man? It was very unexpected because it's not really, it wasn't my true love. If, you, if I were to talk to you about my true love, <laughs> I'm more of a Harry Dresden or a John Constantine. That's my true love. But, yeah, let's be totally honest that um, it it's a it's a it's a major subject in the study of the occult that if I didn't know it, that's mm. like saying that you're into NLP but you don't know who Bandler is. You know what I mean? It's like oh really now? Oh really <laughs> now? So oh, it's really like okay, now. you're kind of missing a big chunk of your knowledge there. So when I was 14 years old, I was vi- visiting a bookstore in the San Francisco Bay Area. It was called the Psychic Eye Bookshop. And they would usually host these small events, these parties, where people would sell goods, do readings and stuff. And then one day I went there after class and then they were like doing one of those changis. And then I saw this guy, he was tall, really massive guy, like six foot above. He had curly, curly whitish peppery hair and a beard. And he was looking through his tarot cards and I approached him and said, sir, are those the tarot cards? And he looked at me and he corrected me. He said, you mean the tarot? I said, oh, yes, the tarot cards. Yeah. Are those the tarot cards? And he said, well, well, yes, they are. Why? And I said, I was a kid. And in the States, when you're 14, that's the worst time to be alive because 
can't work yet, so you have no money, but your parents don't want to give you shit. So you're just like living on feet. <laughs> so you ask for everything. So basically, I went up to him and said, well, could you teach me how to read those tarot cards? You know, yeah. Why not? And he gave me a funny look. He reached under his table or baul. He pulled out something wrapped in cloth and handed it to me. Wow. The tarot deck. And I'm like, yeah, thanks, sir, but I can't afford it. I have no money. And he said, oh, no, no, no. It's for you. You can have it. I'm like, wow. And I said, nice, hey, man. Oh, what, do I, what do I do now? What's my first lesson? And he said, ah, that's your journey. Now, excuse me. I have to read for someone. And then I, you know, I was like, if I don't leave now, the shop might think that I sold this or charged me for it. I'm going to have to give it back. So I crept out of that shop with that deck in hand. And that was 14. And then ever since then, the tarot pretty much has been part and parcel to my life. Um, I have really, really wanted to rebrand and re-image how Filipinos think of the tarot. Because I'm really mm. done with all the gapo, the all yeah, um, hula. Madame oh, Buddha, hula. stuff like oh. that, the, the uh. gimmick marketing. Of it. Yeah, hula. I mean, I'm, I'm done with that. I'm done with that. I want people to see the, the how do I say, the value of what it brings to people. I want people to see that it's a beautiful Thing. It can do a lot of good for people, and you, know, you have nothing to lose. But you know, you have nothing to lose but your fear by having a tarot session. Uh, John, it's 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 having a tarot session is therapeutic for me. You well, know? I'm glad you said that. I mean, it's very because I like so, you know, there's been a lot of um, negative negative how do I say stereotypes and a lot of negative information floating around about the tarot mm. and. Mm. That's why every time I give a reading, I'll just tell you my spiel. When people come to me for a reading, I tell them, I tell you three things. I tell you where you've been, where you are, and where you could be going. Why am I sure where you've been and where you are? Because we can't change that. But where you could be going, that's something else. Okay? Now, number two, also what I tell my clients is I tell them that, um, and I actually ask them, don't share any of your private or personal details to me until the end of the reading because I don't want to be influenced by anything. Because if you tell me during the reading that you're an NLP hypnosis guy and they say, oh, wow, look, this card shows to me you'll be good at NLP and hypnosis. <laughs> oh, but you're not a fool of it. I just told you that. <laughs> so basically, I also tell them that no reading is ever set in stone. You know, they, I tell them that uh-huh. in the reading, it's really about empowering you. We'll show you where, um, trajectory, probability, cause and effect. But at the end of the day, everything is in your hands. Yeah, I, I've seen, Rob, you've been teaching a lot of uh, people recently in regards to reading. And uh, yes. yeah, syempre, uh, <laughs> friends tayo sa Facebook, nakikita ko yan. And uh, I like it, man. Uh, sobrang lumalaki na yung community, bro. That's super nice. Because that was part of our marketing plan. Because when we started Mysterium, the market was flooded with a lot of what we call misfortune tellers. Okay, in other <laughs> words, they would give bad news, take, care, take advantage of clients, and it was really staining the name of tarot. So basically what our strategy was to inject into the market qualified, really trained professional readers so that eventually they would outnumber the questionable readers. And that's basically the, the, the tactic of Mysterium that like, mm. okay, we cannot do anything about the bad readers, so let's flood the practice with good readers. It's just like, I'm sure it's just like an NLP. You know those fake quote-unquote NLP masters and yeah. then you've got the genuine NLP practitioners. If you keep teaching people genuine NLP practices, eventually the, the, the populace as a whole will already be more enlightened. It's like, wait a minute. We've heard a lot about NLP because of Ken, because of Strix. This is not the real NLP. And eventually those people will just fall off on their own. So that's basically what we're doing, why we have so many tarot, because we really want to develop a culture where tarot is not just accepted, it's even appreciated. May chance ba, Rob, na... Uh, you you also could cater to people in like uh, uh, different parts of the Philippines, like yeah, yeah. Cebu, uh, Mindanao. We actually, we actually have an online correspondence course. Um, mm-hmm. Some of our graduates aren't even from Metro Manila. The course oh. itself is six weeks long. Okay. But then for those who can't come to Manila, we actually have a distance learning program. And as long as they fill up the requirements and do the, the necessary assignments, we'll gladly you know consider them as part of our ranks. Yeah, malaking, malaking, uh, there are a lot of people interested. Di, guys, sa mga nanonood, di, ko, di nyo kasi alam, baka ito yung calling nyo, di ba? <laughs> di ba? Nice. You'll I mean, never know. You'll never know. In my years of practicing the tarot, because I have been very, very, how do I say, I have been very respectful towards how I treat it. I don't mm-hmm. think it's like some tool to get laid or something like that. It there is, are people that do that. <laughs> yeah. 
So um, I, let's say it like this. I have really been blessed by the energies of the tarot because I give people what I call a PTE, positive tarot experience. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm feeding the positive image of the tarot in the country. And that's what I tell my students to do. Be a positive influence. Don't be a doomsayer. Uh, that, that's uh, meron akong solid na gustong i-add diyan. Uh, I have a question. Sure. Um yeah, my um, my father's side of the family does does that uh, readings then uh, pala I will I'm already always intrigued. Uh, may energy ba yung card? So the energy... kung nga, iba iba kasi yung cards eh, 'di ba? So may, may, ito ito yung gagamitin ko ngayon. Ito yung Ang dami, okay. iba iba yung cards eh. May energy ba? Loaded question. Because that's <laughs> an intuitive topic that we have called collective energy. Okay. That the more people adhere to something, the more people practice something, the more collected energy. Remember, tarot is probably 100 years old, more hmm. than that. I mean, no, 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 more than 100 years old. So, yeah, it's pretty old. Crusades pa. So, <laughs> people have been reading using the cards all around the world for hundreds of hundreds of years. Okay, and they have been giving their own resonance, their own psychic energy to that. And as a result, it gets a consciousness of its own. So mm. do, do the cards archetypally have an energy? Yes. Do the decks have energy? Yes, they also have the imprints of people. But there is a collective energy behind the tarot, definitely. Oh, so, yeah. Thanks, thanks for answering that. Because uh, parang hinihingi ko nga yung angel cards ng tita ko. I... Parang may, may, alam mo yung may naramdong affinity <laughs> sa card na yun. Parang nung sinubukan ko siyang gamitin, it was easy for me to actually ask a question and ang bilis mag-resonate sa akin yung <laughs> answers. Wala lang. I just wanted to ask that question, man. No, angel cards are something else. They're not exactly tarot cards and they're not... Yeah, really... yeah iba siya. Mm. So yeah, let's go to uh, reading, pare. Um, yeah, may... You pick, a, you pick three lucky people to ask a question and you read it and I will answer it live on air. Oh, Chris. Uh, yeah, oh, Chris, ask a question. While you're guys, doing that. Comment, comment na kayo, guys. Uh, my wife muna. Oh. Okay, what's her question? Honey, oh, nahiya na yun. Nahiya na yun. Oh, <laughs> oh, guys, uh, ask your question. We'll, we'll wait for your question here, man. Grabe, bilis ang show. 45 minutes, tapos na. Seryoso? Yeah, we started at 9. It's 9.45. Guys, in, in regards to... Uh, some people are asking me in regards to persuasion and communication skills. Ito, ito lang siguro, quick, quick, uh, masagot ko lang yun. Um, make people feel comfortable to the point na kaya nilang mag-share sa'yo ng secrets nila. Mm -hmm. And you, you could see if you're doing that, you're getting trust. And, exactly. Uh, you rapport. You, rapport, trust. Uh, pero, ano eh, it's hard. I don't know, we have friends that have really trust issues. I, I, I understand that. Pero, to get trust, you give trust. It's a reciprocation. Exactly. Diba? Or as Karsten would say, go first. That's a go first, yeah, principle, yeah. Ah, si Julian Junisho. Hi, Julian. So, sige, let's, let's go with this question. I just want to ask way. kung Paano ko kontrahin ang curse? May nagbasa kasi sa akin that I've been cursed. That's a deep question. Do I need to draw the tarot with this? Uh, okay. Um, I don't think I need the tarot for this one. Okay. The very first thing that you need to watch out for is your own mind. Why? Because a lot of the time when somebody says you're cursed, you're the one who ends up cursing yourself. Like example, what's his name? Ken. Uh, Julian. 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 I tell him right now, Julian, I curse you with the seven angels Julian. of hell. Yeah, Julian. Yeah. Yeah. Julian, I curse you with the seven angels of hell. Tonight you will never sleep well again. I didn't even curse you. You probably cursed yourself. So in other words, you have to have a mental model to know, wait a minute. Is this guy really going to go out of his way to curse me? Okay? What is his MO? What is his motive? What is his opportunity? Why would he want to do this? Why would he go through all this effort to curse me? Did I do something wrong? Or lang ako? Because there are a lot of people who think that they're cursed, but they don't realize that they're just cursing themselves. Okay? So if you really do feel that you're cursed and you're confident that you have all the proof that there, and, and a mangkukulam from Siki Hor named Tatay Alfred <laughs> sent you the letter, 
then send me a message. We'll talk about it in private. Ayan, may connect, may connect question kay, coming from Isabel. Paano ba malalaman kung na-curse ka? Okay, wow. <laughs> I said, ask questions about Tyro, but they want to ask more questions. <laughs> Get, get your hands on a copy of my book, Defensive Occultism. It's all there. I wish I had a copy of it with me right now. Uh, for only 700 pesos, you can have your very own Defense Against the Dark Arts manual. But if you want to know if you've been cursed, start with the MO. Okay? In other words, I cannot tell you that I've been hypnotized unless I experienced a hypnotist. Diba? Mm. Even a budol budol is a hypnotist. So the very first thing I would ask you is, Who's the hypnotist that hypnotized you? Diba? It's the mm. same thing with cursing. Who, who practices magic and sorcery did you piss off? Did you piss off anyone like that? Kung no, then most likely guni guni mo yan. Because mm. nobody's just going to randomly curse you for no reason. That's like saying, I'm going to drop kick somebody along Katipunan for no reason. <laughs> Don't be planning about it, guys. Uh, question, Rob, uh, just to add with that line of uh, questions that we have. Um, I, mean, I mean, tawas, man. I mean, uh, okay. tawas, that, yeah, man. it's a form of, it's a localized form of divination. It basically uh-huh. is an energy resonance form of divination where they take a piece of paper or some wax and they imbue it with, they touch the person on the forehead or they put their intention on it and they either put it into water and scry via how it looks in the bowl or they burn the paper near a piece of cat to see what forms come out on the paper. It's, mm. it's got a strong collective energy behind it and it's very powerful among, amongst Filipinos. So I'd say it's one of the more interesting forms of divination I've learned. Uh, mm. The late Alex Angeles taught it to me before he died, so I had the honor of learning it from him. Yeah, yeah. Kasi, uh, yun, guys. So, hope that answered your question. Uh, message pa kayo dito. Yun, sa taro. Sulitin nyo. <laughs> sulitin nyo to. Well, question, Rob has a uh, show also. Uh, yun, yeah. sabi ko nga, follow or add Rob and uh, you you could get to, meron siyang readings on a daily basis. Uh, dun sa, yung sabi ko ka kanina, yung I like it. Kasi yung, he has, she shows two cards face down and then you check it kung pili ka, kung left or right. I mean, diba? May ganun. And you can join his show, uh, Tarot Thursdays. Mm-hmm. Every Thursday, uh, religiously, he does uh, readings online. Diba? Fa- Naka-Facebook Live ka rin, no, Rob? Exactly. I do it every Thursday night around 8 or 9 p.m., depending if I'm available. And the rules mm-hmm. are simple. Just tune in on my fan page and mm-hmm. people like. If you're going to ask a question, please and thank you. I hate that people just tune in. Career, love life. Basan mo ko. It's like, hey. <laughs> I mean, a little bit of politeness will go along. <laughs> okay, okay. Chris, nandiyan ka pa ba? Yung, may nagtanong kasi kanina, si Christina Reclamado, uh, ilalike natin. Sige. Kasi kung may question kayo regarding sa mga buhay ninyo, career, love life, um, yeah, Rob Rob would be glad to actually uh, read read for you. Pero while we're waiting for for questions to come in, um, ito, tala lang ha, uh, scroll up lang ako, ah. Okay. Wow. Yans. Hi, Yans. Hi, Romel. Daniel. Okay. Uh, ito, Lay. Ito, Lay Lim. Sometimes people needs assurance. Uh, based to sa topic kanina, ang, ang maganda kasi sa law of attraction, kasi yun yung pinag-uusapan natin kanina, eh, yung you really, if you really want it. Mm-hmm. Ang laking tulong ng affirmation coming from other people also. I mean, there we we uh, 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 we could all agree that we have friends and family members that, sure, crab mentality also in the Philippines. Eh. But when when uh, people uh, ask me in regards to how they could improve themselves, palay ko unang sinasabi, change your surroundings. Tignan exactly. mo mo yung, yung mga tao sa paligid mo. Tignan mo yung Facebook wall mo, di ba? Sino ba yun nandut sa Facebook wall mo? Kasi if yun yung nakaka-contribute dun sa subconscious mind mo on a daily basis eh. Kasi, of I course, agree. on a daily basis, pagkagising mo, most likely, we open Facebook and we scroll down, scroll, scroll, scroll. And yung mga tao na nakikita mo, sila rin yung nakikita mo bukas kasi ganun yung algorithm ni Facebook. Okay. Not only that too, I like, you know, if I, I have friends, actually some very good friends of mine that I've actually like, not, not unfriended, but I've unfollowed them just because I don't like their vitriol. You know what I, I mean? I did. 
<laughs> like nothing against you but I don't like seeing you on my wall. Simple as that. Kasi you know, they either make reklamo, mga ganyan, they're always, you know, and, you know, I don't want that to do, to hinder our friendship. So, you, wow. people to know that they have that ability. Um, I have a policy with myself, especially when I'm in more heavier moments, you know, as a community leader, you get points where you're depressed or you get anxious. Mm. And my policy has always been that when I'm in those states, I only choose to be around people who make me feel good about myself. Why will you want to be with somebody that you can't stand? I mean, it's like, well, what the hell? Why am I going to bother doing that? That's just not who I am. Yeah, but I'm <laughs> very important to say that. Uh, yeah, there are people that would make you feel awkward, make you feel uncomfortable. So, sa akin, I mean, uh, your old friends are still your friends. But you might have seen your new friends mo ngayon, Most of them are the people that actually support you. Mm-hmm. Ako, ako, so that's my personal experience. I mean, I have a lot of old friends. They're still my friends. But I choose to uh, surround myself with uh, people that actually push me forward right now. Yeah, that's very important because sometimes people tend to surround themselves by people who actually drag them back. And then they complain why they're not moving forward in life. I mm-hmm. mean, when you have a dream... Okay, this is a bit of manifestation. This is the topic on manifestation for you. But I actually tell you, if you have a goal that you want to achieve for yourself, in manifestation, one of the things I tell people is to keep it to yourself. Why? Mm-hmm. Okay, example. I talk to you and I talk to your wife. I tell you again, mm-hmm. my goal, nag MMA ako, I want to join MMA. So I go, pare laban, go. So I'll mm-hmm. get your sponsors. Then I tell your wife, oi, I want to do MMA. Hi, wag, you'll get hurt. <laughs> okay? The thing about it is this: what you didn't realize is that I, I got a positive energetic response from you, mm. but I got a negative energetic response from your wife. Mm-hmm. You understand? So basically, even though I got a plus one from you in gaming mm. terms, I got a minus one from your wife. So every time you make a decision or every time you state something, a goal for yourself, it will either be given energy or energy will be subtracted from it. And then you find all of a sudden, ah, pare, bad shot, nasirado ang promotion that I was supposed to fight for. It's because yeah. people gave their own energy. Some people gave energy that they didn't support it and it cock locked you. How do we get around this? Mm, Be quiet about it. Ow. Because it's your goal anyway. That's why when my second book was coming out, mm. I was more quiet about it than I was with the first one. Because the first one, I made a lot of noise and it got cock blocked. The third one, I'm not even giving the name. Do you understand? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, pare, I, I'm taking note from that, man. Thanks. Because uh, if, if achievement of a goal is your your objective, then you know it it wouldn't it would only help you by keeping quiet. Because like I've had times where I literally told one person about the goal I was trying to get, or like, oh, guess what? I'm gonna get this, and I told them, but secretly they they didn't want me to succeed. Ano nangyari? They kind of hexed what I was doing. New energy, huh? Yeah. Versus um, if they didn't know anything, then they couldn't have any effect on that. Tama, tama. Agree, man. So ako, I'll. May 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 conflicting yun. There are uh, ako ako. I stand with what you're saying. Pero there are a lot of mentors then na parang lalo sa <laughs> mga friends at sa MLM industry. Hello, de ba? Kailangan mo daw declare, <laughs> declare yung yeah, yeah, You can declare it to yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I think of it like this. Of course, there's also the accountability as as well. Pero hmm. there's also another side of it too. There are three kinds of people you can deal with. There are people who will support you. There are people who will want you to fail, and there will be pe- there will be people who will not want to be proven wrong. They still count as people who want you to fail. Example: If I told you I want to be hi- uh, the best hypnotist in the country because I don't believe in NLP, okay, mm. that would trigger you because he by parin NLP ako. If mm. he succeeds and he becomes a successful hypnotist, it proves I am bad. Hence. Mm. The, ne- the energy you're giving me now is even if you're oh, go laban go for it. It's not genuine support. It's really kind of like passive aggressive. You understand? Tama. Because mm. you don't want to be proven wrong, diba? Or like when your family tells you, no, dapat you work in the bank because the money there is good. No, I want to be an artist. I love the negative. <laughs> okay. gonna, but there's no money in art. It's not that they want you to fail because they're your family. They love you, but they don't want to be proven wrong. So there's still blocking. The thing is. If you get quiet about it, you don't need to worry about that that variable. 
Tama, Ben. Kasi uh, one of the last things I want to really give to people, and we're actually going to be working on a course about this soon in Mysterium. If you really want to get anywhere in this world, you need to build your support group. Okay? Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about your allies, your friends. Support group that you know that if you shoot someone today, one of these people will appear and say, where do we bury the bodies? Okay? <laughs> That's a support group. A support group where sometimes, it, it, it's tricky because sometimes the people you're working with are secretly right. competing with you. So your support group is like somebody who wouldn't want you to fail because there's no reason for you to fail. Like, why the fuck would I care if you fa- succeed or not? I'm not trying to be the best NLP guy, diba. Right? Mm. That could be a support group. The guy would be like, okay, I'm here to help you because I genuinely care about you. Mm. We're in this together. Your victory is my victory and vice versa. That is a support group. If you have that, you're unstoppable. Value. Yeah, sobrang solid yan, man. Uh, yan lang, Rob, may mga questions siya tayo habang nag-uusap tayo. Yan na, nagtanong na sila. So, isa-isa na natin, ha? based on chronological, guys. So si Nevia De Los Santos, sabi niya na experience ko na po mabudol. Ano pong advice niyo para makaiwas ulit? Uh, ito, siguro I could give you that answer. Um, if you could watch uh, mga episodes ni Rob sa Mysterium After Dark, we talked about this budol-budol way, uh, weeks back. Si Justin yeah. Pinion kahapon din, we talked about it also. May isa lang akong sagot dyan, attention. Basically, that's it. Awareness. If you don't give your fucking attention, awareness, you're aware of it wala hindi ka mabubudol okay yun lang yun isa sa mga factors ng hypnosis is yung uh, formula ng hypnosis is ABS, ABS. absorb attention bypass the bypass conscious mind and suggest, and suggest. And oh. oh so kung wala yung attention wala yung hypnosis okay clear okay yun i hope that answers your question <laughs> bilis di ba <laughs> so kay Ella Ella ano na uh, may kakilala po ako nakakabasa daw po siya ng palad at marunong din daw po siya magbasa ng card pero yung card daw po niya siya lang po yung nagdrawing pwede ba yung ganun what, wait, what she she reads what uh meron siyang friend na nakakabasa ng palms and marunong din mag card reading okay good so the question is uh kaya daw okay lang bang uh, kaya ba niya magbasa kahit siya lang yung nagdrawing ng sarili niyang cards Yeah, of course. Because if you're going to ask me to read for you, I'm going to draw the cards. But I usually tell people it's difficult for people to read for themselves because even the best Barbero doesn't cut his own hair. <laughs> yep. <Diba? laughs> oh. And I, I mean, I, I think Ella, Ella's meaning na, uh, dude, kuwari ako artist ako. Uh, nag-drawing ako, gumawa ako na sarili kong tarot deck. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yun yung parang tanong niya eh. Parang... Yun yung ginamit niya yung sarili niyang draw, draw cards to read people. Kaya daw ba magbasa? I think, Ella, oo, kaya niya. Kaya That's niya magbasa. Yeah. I don't see any, any harm in that. Yeah, oo. Tapos, can you read someone's fortune by using the common deck of cards? Yes, you can because the common deck of cards was originally inspired by the minor arcana cards. It's harder but it's possible. Uh, yeah, <laughs> na-experience ko yan. Basa na yan. Uh, kay Yansh, Kahukom, how can my positive energy influence my daily routine without draining out? Nice. Okay, here's the thing. If it's positive, it won't drain out. The only reason you drain out is because you're using negative energy. You understand? If you're happy all day long, you won't lose the happiness. So let go of that mental model. Okay? However, mm-hmm. the only reason you drain out is because you put up with some guy's bullshit and he ticked you off and he drained you. Mm. So sometimes you have to go back to center. You have to be able to say, hey, I'm not going to let this guy ruin my day. Because uh, you know, it's a choice. Believe it or not, it's really a choice. And <laughs> by making that choice, um, you know, you're more aware and more, you're more of a, you're not a victim to your circumstances, in other words. Mm-hmm. Uh, can we add natin kay yung mga wise words? Uh? Sundan nyo kasi si Dr. Strix. Alam natin, wala si Strix sa Facebook. Pero hi, Strix. Yeah. Hey, What's up, Strix. bro? <laughs> Pero ito yung... Ito yung ito yung isa sa mga golden nuggets na I, I, I'll keep on uh, treasuring it forever. Ang sabi na lang sa akin is beyond selfish marketing. Mm-hmm. That's fucking deep, man. <laughs> Isipin nyo na lang yun, guys. Beyond selfish marketing. Ayan. Damn. Damn, man. So, ayan. Kay Risa Salamanca. Hi, Risa. Sabi ni Risa, good evening to both of you. I want a tarot reading, please. Uh, ayan. Kay Julian din. Can I have a tarot reading? Yes, Lisa, Lisa Salamanca, okay. Listen, Lisa. 
um, she's going to need to make the choice between two options. It's regards to money. One of them is going to pay well, but it's going to drain her out. It's going to be very exhausting. The other may not pay as well, but it will give her more fulfillment. Neither of these two are the correct answer. Okay. In other words, it all depends on her circumstances. If she is in need of the money, then go for the payout. If she is in need of personal time, then go for the fulfillment. It's like this. Given a choice, I would never go to Las Piñas to do tarot readings. No offense. Mm. However, if I really needed the cash, <laughs> like, hey, Ken, pare, nung gagawin ko dyan, di ba? <laughs> so, it's really a depend it, it depends on what her priority is right now. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hi, Risa. Hopefully, hope for that. I know. Okay na yun. Okay, Julian. Can Julian Dionisio, can I have a tarot reading? Okay. Julian. Julian, here's the thing. You've been extra bitchy lately. And I'm not saying because you're a bitch, but because people are taking you for granted. Okay? According to this card, you're overextended. Think of it like this. If I didn't feed you and didn't let you sleep for three days straight, you'd be pretty bitchy. But you're not a bitch. A bitch, kahit you feed them and you let them sleep, uh, they're still going to be a bitch. Now, this card shows to me, this is all about you setting boundaries, okay? If you set boundaries, then people will learn to respect you. But if you let people trample all over you, then may the force be with you. Oh, yun. Okay, ito, question lang naman to. Hindi naman to reading, Rob. Uh, tanong ni Mike Crespo, what is your favorite card in the tarot deck? The Emperor. Mm. Mali yeah. yung nilagay ko dun sa... It okay. shows a good one. It shows a good one. Thank you for that. Yeah, Ayan, naki- nakita ko kasi sa wall mo. Eh. Okay, the maid, shyest to. Sige, gawin natin sa so poster. You actually did a good job with that poster. Thank you. Oh, thanks, man. I mean, trying my best. <laughs> Sige, ang ganda ng mga posters mo lately. Di, ano, syempre, di ba? Kailangan natin bigyan ng justice yung poster mo, man. Uh, so, it's my bit, I guess. Ayan, kay Isabel Bernardo, yan. Ayan. May I have a tarot reading okay. Isabel Bernardo. For the last yeah. one for Isabel. Yeah, last one. Okay, actually a lot of money is coming your way, Isabel, this year. Um, focus it on steering this money towards a higher version of yourself. In other words, invest into you. So for example, you get a million bucks and maybe it's time you take up law finally. Or another one is if you feel that um, you want to go traveling to become a better person, then by all means, go ahead and do it. Solid. Ito, last na lang. Ha? Okay lang, Rob. Last. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, from a person that watched you sa BNO, na napakinggan ka sa BNO. Uh-huh. Yeah, ilang beses na rin na guest si Rob sa Boys Night Out. I, I always listen to the boys. Uh, yeah, can I get a tarot reading? I uh, heard you from BNO. GRG Kamya. Okay, GRG. An older man is gonna enter your life. Very good looking, but he's emotionally repressed. I don't know what this person's objectives is, but they will get rather fond of you. This can turn any way. It can become a good friend. It could become a mentor. It could even potentially become romantic. All I can tell you is that they're older and really good looking. So congratulations in advance. Yon. Guys, sabi ko sa inyo. Ganito guys. Uh, may may uh, live ano, si Rob Bukas. Uh, it's Thursday tomorrow. It's Star of Thursday. Tarot Thursdays and yep. um, yeah, Rob would be glad to uh, accommodate yeah sa mga tao dun. Uh, usapan ko kasi namin <laughs> Pero I hope uh, ano naman tayo dyan. Um, Rob would be glad to guest again or uh, anytime, me, anytime, anytime. Uh, wala naman problema. Pero, plug, uh, can I plug something? Yeah, please. Yeah. Plug anything, man. For those of you interested in learning the tarot, we're having a, we're opening a new course of the tarot this July at Mysterium Philippines. And we're also opening our Hallmark Intuitive Awakenings program July 6 and 7. Uh, it's from 12 to 8 p.m. both days. And you're going to learn everything you need to know about practical intuition. But for those of you who would like to experience a private reading with me, you can gladly contact me on Facebook or text me at 916 0916- Five five one one eight two four. I can do readings from anywhere in the world via Skype or in person from our office at Mysterium. Oh, guys, nandun sa description ng uh, live na to yung uh, links ni Rob. You feel free to check check the links out. And isa din sa mga maganda yung initiative din niya. He, he has a show uh, live live then. Uh, every every kailan yung Mysterium, Mysterium After Dark. Um, Monday nights if there's a guest because you know it's kind of imagine how tricky it would be to run that show without a guest 
<laughs> ako, ako wala. Ito, ito kwento. <laughs> it was a lot of fun when you guys were there. Pero imagine kung ako lang isa, matanga ako pa dyan. <laughs> ang kulit ka lang ito. Doon nila Strix. Pero that was fun. Yeah. Si Jason, Strix. Yeah. Sobra solid. I have a card. Guys, yun nga. Thank you for the initiative dito. Mga questions inyo. Yeah. Yung mga questions for reading. Uh, yeah. Join kayo sa show ni Rob tomorrow. Ngayon kasi medyo short na tayo sa time. Pero, Rob, thank you so much. Uh, super, super, I appreciate your time joining us today for this session of Inside the Mind of Man. The honor was all mine. I hope to do it again. Any, any, any uh, words of advice to uh, our viewers that would um, want to change in their lives? Well, have a tarot reading. <laughs> <laughs> sure, man. So, yun, yun lang, guys. So, thank you again. Uh, my name is Ken Ken Samara, and uh, this is Inside the mind of Robert Rubin. Have a great night, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.